Hi everyone, today we are going to remove the stock R12 based AC system and install the R134A based system in the Zen. So some of you may have heard the name Subros. They are an Indian company with a JV between the Indian promoters Denso and Suzuki Motor Corporation. They are an OEM for AC components for many of the car manufacturers. So I wrote to Subros requesting if they can help me with the installation of the R134 based system. They replied, got in touch with me and a very senior person who is looking after the customer service for the South India region and his technician paid me a visit. They said they can do it with parts salvaged from another Zen, but they'll all be properly refurbished. So after all the parts were collected by the technician, we jointly decided on a day when we can install the system and I drove the car to the technician's place. So let's see how this is done. So the parts are ready. Here's the piping. You can see the evaporator assembly here and uh, this is the compressor assembly right here and uh, here's the condenser coil and this is Mahesh, our trusty technician for the day who has a lot of experience in car AC systems. Mahesh has a small garage here in Tinagar with all the required tools and parts and he takes up work based on Subros' inputs. So here's a car and the first thing we are going to do is to remove the stock evaporator assembly. The dashboard has to be loosened a bit and not completely removed. There are some screws inside the glove box also which are to be removed. So there you go, the glove box has been removed from the dashboard. This bracket that you see here has been removed from the bottom of the dashboard. And uh, this cable that you see here, the cable end rather, it controls the opening and closing of the fresh air when you turn the knob. The plenum box of the inlet air has been removed. All the fresh air from outside is taken inside through this plenum box and this is also how rats will make an entry inside the car. You can see that uh, in the sticker here that uh, it has been made by Subros. Now we will disconnect the suction and discharge lines from the engine bay. Once these two lines are disconnected, we can remove the evaporator assembly from the cabin. You know, ideally speaking, we should connect this to a vacuum unit to the system to drain all the refrigerant and should not discharge it to the atmosphere as it is environmentally harmful, especially the R12 uh, refrigerant. So the pipes have been uh, disconnected and uh, the evaporator assembly has now been removed. The evaporator coil is located inside this plenum box so we will dismantle the box and remove the coil and uh, that's our replacement evaporator unit right there. So the plenum box has been finally dismantled and here is our stock evaporator coil and uh, you can also see all the leaves, feathers and such that has made its way inside. We have now soaked the innards of the box with soapy water for giving it a proper cleaning before installing the new coil. After cleaning and drying the plenum box with the compressed air, the new evaporator coil is now being installed. What you see here is the temperature sensor for the thermostat that cuts off the compressor when the cooling levels have been achieved. An age-old practice which is still in use in modern air conditioning systems. Now we are installing the evaporator assembly into the car uh, behind the dashboard and uh, here you can see the suction and discharge lines from the evaporator assembly peeking outside into the engine bay. The fresh air plenum box has also been cleaned and it is now being installed uh, back into the car. Man I am super famished having just had a tea in the morning. I am right now devouring two vellapam and uh, chicken stew that I swiggied to Mahesh's garage. Now the next order of business is to replace a compressor unit and the condenser coil. The front grill has been removed uh, and so is the bumper. The grill comes off with just three bolts with the 10 number socket and the bumper with a bunch of bolts so all easy. That's one connection to the condenser coil at the bottom left and at the top right uh, here. Uh, next up uh, we'll now uh, remove the condenser coil connections. A little bit of jugad if you may and uh, it easily comes off. The condenser coil has been bent and is not in a good shape as evident here. The electrical connector to the condenser fan is located at the corner here. We have just disconnected it. Back in the day, a lot of parts for the Maruti cars were imported from Japan, like this motor of the condenser fan from Denso. 22 years later and I'm pretty damn sure this fan still works. 
Next up, we are going to remove the compressor assembly. Looks like this is a classic mechanic trick to get the right amount of leverage. We also have to remove the compressor pulley belt and to do that, we need to slacken that tensioner you see here at the bottom. And uh, once you do that, the belt comes off easily. Because the heat shield of the exhaust manifold was exposed, I decided to renew these rusted bolts that you see here. And I always have a bunch of extra fasteners with me, so it helps. We are now installing the refurbished R134A compressor into the car. And I have this new V-belt for the compressor pulley. It is 4PK830 from Continental. We are now installing the new RD bottle or uh, the receiver uh, dryer bottle. Here is the new one. The stock piping have been completely removed from the car and uh, there is a significant difference between R12 and R134A base tubing. And the O-rings used are of a different material. If you use R134A gas in an R12 base system, the O-rings will go bad over time and the AC system will fail. Here we are purging the condenser with petrol to clean its interiors of dust and other particles. We don't usually use water as it does not dry off quickly. Now here you can see the compressed air assembly made from a commercial chiller unit. Now let's test if the old Denso motor from the condenser fan works by connecting it directly to the battery. So it works as expected. The fan unit has been removed from the stock condenser assembly. Very simple. Uh, all you got to do is remove the three bowls using a 10 number socket. One is here, another one there, and you got another one right here. Now what you see here is a stock fan assembly from the condenser unit. Now this one does not fit the R134's condenser unit as the mounting points are different. So we will replace the motor and impeller assembly from the stock unit and replace it in the R134 shroud. Here you can see the replacement condenser and the mounting locations here are uh, different from the stock unit. We are now removing the impeller unit from the fan assembly. Three Phillips screws hold the impeller to the spindle. And uh, once the impeller is removed, you can see that uh, three Phillips screws hold the motor unit to the shroud. So the stock Denso motor was installed in the replacement shroud and the shroud is being screwed to the condenser as you can see now. We are installing new fasteners. As a matter of fact, I've been putting new fasteners wherever possible. They are dirt cheap and uh, uh, doesn't harm to you know have a bunch of fasteners in your stash. You also get these clips with a nut spot welded and we are using them where a conventional nut can't be used. So finally, after all the hard work, uh, the replacement condenser and the relating piping is in place for the connections. And while we are at it, we have also changed the rubber bushing in the mounts, as you can see here. Now you see these joints here. Now this one is connected uh, to the condenser assembly. Similarly, you have uh, these connections at the compressor. You have O-rings here, as you can see. It's always a good idea to smear the compressor oil to the O-rings just like how we lube the O-rings for the engine oil filters. It's always considered a good practice and uh, we must do that. Connect the fan's electrical connector and uh, the compressor's magnetic clutch connection. Smearing some compressor oil at the joints before we connect them. All the connections are completed. We proceed to do the pressure testing with the compressor setup. Uh, the test pressure is approximately 250 PSI. We have to ensure that there are absolutely no leaks anywhere in the system, else the gas will escape out of the system, rendering the AZ useless. So we hold this test uh, pressure test for approximately 15 to 20 minutes at 250 bar. We have sprayed soapy water on all the joints. So if there are any leaks, we would know as uh, bubbles would start forming at these joints. There are about uh, 10 joints or connections in the complete system. So we will pour the soapy water in all these joints to test for any leakages. So with the pressure testing completed, we proceed to do the vacuum testing. Vacuum testing is essentially the opposite of uh, pressure testing. What we do is we hold the vacuum below zero PSI using the compressor setup and uh, hold it for some time. 
if there are any apparent leaks anywhere in the system the pressure gauge uh, reading would uh, be approximately 14.7 psi or thereabouts which is essentially the atmospheric pressure so the vacuum testing is also a success no leaks anywhere the reading on the pressure gauge held well for about 15 minutes now we also have to change the connector to the pressure switch which is located close to the rd bottle as it is different from the stock connector now we have spliced the cables and uh, as you can see here we have now uh, given the connections now that the pressure testing and vacuum testing is completed the last step is to charge the system with the r134 alpha refrigerant we are using the refrigerant from fluoron a very reputed brand that sells refrigerants Here you can see the charging line connected using the blue LP port. The low pressure or the LP port connects itself to the larger line. So the system has been charged with our 134A gas. This bottle has very little quantity of refrigerant left inside. Now let's go and check the cabin for the cooling effect. Oh man, chilling air in the zen after ages. There you go, 9.9 uh, .9 degrees centigrade. To be very honest, I don't recall the last time that we had used uh, AC in the Zen. This is chilling properly, guys. But yeah, in this generation of cars, I'm sure the Zen owners would appreciate. The AC button was similar to the nitrous switch. For quick overtaking maneuvers, we used to turn off the AC and release the load from the compressor and the car used to get a proper boost. The compressor has cut off at uh, 7.1 degrees centigrade. That's a really good benchmark, I would say. As good as the AC in the modern cars. So after everything, the time is 3 p.m. And we treat ourselves to some good lunch. Nice parotta, veg kurma and salad. Mahesh has had himself a very good day today, I'd say. After I got back to my desk, I sent a mail to Mr. Umesh, the head of customer service for Subros. Uh, especially thanking Mr. Mahesh who has been very helpful and uh, that he did a great job at the installation without uh, cutting any corners. And to that, uh, Mr. Raju from uh, Subros who had visited my apartment initially with Mahesh replied uh, thanking me and the fact that uh, the appreciation for these technicians generally goes unnoticed in the service industry. I now have an immense respect for Subros as a company especially for helping a customer who, despite having a 22-year-old car with an outdated AC system, they chose to help. So guys, that wraps up this video. I hope you liked it. Be sure to like and subscribe if you did. Let me know if you have any comments and I'd be glad to answer them. Thank you so much, guys.